okay and just very lightly take some of this off now I'm going to show you the tissue in a minute you see what I mean look at all this lot that's all the paint I've removed from the painting so far but to do that that creates the added highlights as well yes I can use watercolor white which is what I've used for all the face all the kind of light areas of this osprey they're lovely birds aren't they they really are so I've added watercolor white into there but then I've got a mixture of burnt sienna burnt umber raw sienna and um, lamp black obviously as well and obviously we've got the yellows which is lemon yellow a little bit of losing crimson in there as well within the within the fur within the feathers should I say I did say fur then so a little bit of losing crimson in there as well but also I've got within the eye you wouldn't believe it but I've got um, burnt sienna in there at the same time just kind of add the extra detail within the eye itself so that's what I wanted to do with that okay right so let's just work a little bit lower I think what I might do is I'm going to go for a little bit of lamp black and burnt umber which is going to be this one here so that's got one then it's going to re-wet the area just a little bit I don't want it too too runny I want it more like a creamy consistency just to kind of add that in there like so just a creamy consistency then that will give me a much darker tone of paint which is what I want it to be I don't want it too light so I'm thinking about the side the sides of the feathers the left hand side of a lot of these feathers as we look at it are quite dark not completely completely filled in but a lot are quite dark and it's all a matter of kind of building up the layers as you go along just very gradually just a few more in there as well I say I've never seen oh, apart from others here on the television never seen an osprey yet I'd like to one day I really would the lovely birds as I say one day right okay so now what I want to do I want to lift off some more paint down the bottom so these are all the kind of fine tuning details which I like to do come to the end of a painting as I say I'll be signing this one hopefully on camera tonight just to kind of finish it off now one thing I tend to do is that when I sign a painting that's usually when I finished it I, I tend not to prefer not to I've done it once or twice before in the, in the past but I prefer to not go back to it then because that's my last thing to do is put a signature on it that's just the way I do it you know because then the thing with any painting as any artist will know if you're an artist and you're watching this is you never know when to stop you really don't you tend to fiddle and fiddle and fiddle and when you start to fiddle that's when you start, you start to um, well you can overwork it a bit too much I know I know my work is detailed anyway but you can still overwork even detailed work and then you end up getting rid of the the 3d form all the shapes that you've spent all that time and effort point in because when you think on this particular painting there's got to be how many layers I'd say probably five maybe six layers of paint on this particular one because obviously what you've got to bear in mind as well with watercolors as any watercolors will know is that it always dries much lighter than when it goes on so when you add a color say for example on this scrap paper here let's just get a little bit of that burnt sienna and burnt sombre minute and you add a bit of a color on there now that color will dry much lighter but the beauty of it is is that when it's dried lighter you can go in with the same color same one and go over the top and it gets darker on every layer that you add on and then when that's dried you can have another layer over the top and so on so it's a good way of kind of working on your tonal values and getting the depth of color and the depth of tone that you need within an area without using too much in the way of black even though I like using black I know that's something which um, is one of those things that not everybody likes to use but it depends in my eyes how it's used as well I don't use it solely on its own very rarely do I use it on its own because I like to add a color to it because black can look very bland very flat very very flat on its own so you have to bear that in mind with black because um, you need to add if it's something like this for example the black paint of using this which is lamp black I've added alizarin crimson and a little bit of burnt sienna in there as well mixed in with the black so even though in my palette as you got here look 
That looks black, it's not. When you look to the side of the palette, you can just about see on the side there. It's a bit of a, I don't know if you can see that, it's a bit of a purpley hue. And that's the alizarin crimson within there. And that's basically what I've got, you know. For example, this is um, this is a thinned out version of it. And you can see that's not black. It's like a, a ready, a ready brownie black, <laughs> if that's the right word to use. So that's what you're looking at with those. Okay, so let's carry on now. Add a few more little details in. Now if you like to paint birds, don't forget, I've, on my Patreon channel down there, I've got that free Robin tutorial. I'll say about, talk about it every time we come on. Because people don't realize sometimes that it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. There's no sign of it. You don't have to partake with your email address or anything. And they give you the photograph and the outline drawing as well. It's all free. So help yourself, literally. If you do a painting from it, you can do what you want with your painting. You can sell it. You can advertise it. Your choice. It's your painting as far as I'm concerned, okay? There's no restrictions whatsoever on that Robin tutorial. So there you go. Just something I wanted to mention just so you can... Uh, have a go at it. So I'm going to think about bringing out probably some of the lines within the veins. Just the vein, just that, just to kind of lift off. See how I've lifted off that little area there. So there's not a whole lot of painting in this session other than kind of thinking about where there's some highlights. Now I can just see around this area here around the neck, there's suggestion of just edges of feathers in there so I'm going to very lightly dampen it down with a just a damp clean double zero brush do a little bit at a time so that's taking off a fraction of paint there do the same again thinking about the shape all the time what I like to do take a little bit more off so now I've already got a kind of suggestion that there's something there so I'm going to do a little bit more and if it's too much we can add more paint over the top so it's not a problem just a little bit more just down there. Vary the angle as well so it's not all the same. That's it. Just like that. Not like that, just like that. And then just a little bit more. Just a little bit more just around there. I want to create some texture in there. Okay, I'm going to work my way up. See, I've got the photograph in front of me on a tablet, which I tend to use. I always say as well, you know, when you've got a you're working from a photo, make sure if you can anyway, when it's possible, try and get a large photo, a very large detailed photo. I say the one I use is very large, very detailed. In fact, I don't know if I can show you on this camera or not, I'll try. But the one I tend to use is this one here. Bear with me a minute while I bring it into shot. And this is the one, it's by Peter Brannan. So thank you very much, Peter, for allowing me to use your photo. So Peter Brannan, an excellent photographer, which um, has given me permission to kind of work on his photographs. And uh, as you can see, this is absolutely superb. And with this, I can really zoom into all those lovely details. And it stays, that's as big, that's as big as it goes. But that's ideal for me to work from, it really is. And that's what I tend to work with, with my paintings. It's got to be a large, 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 large photo. Okay? So that's what I suggest you do. And that's the beauty about kind of using a tablet or an iPad or something like that because you can just work it from there, you know, you can you can really look at those details within the feathers. Or the fur, it depends on obviously what you're painting at the time. So that's what you want to think about. So if you're painting at the moment, or you've got a painting on the go, what are you painting? What's what's your subject at the moment? What are you working on? So I'll put it in the comments down below. I'd kind of love to hear from you. I do tend to look at the comments after the after the live event because I like to kind of see what people have said. I am nosy like that, you know. <laughs> so uh, so yeah please put your comments down below and I'll see what I can do to uh, to kind of answer your questions and I'd like to kind of see the painting you're working on because especially if it, it doesn't have to be in watercolour but especially if it's wildlife you know so just kind of share that down below with me if you don't mind go on I don't mind you're more than welcome to put your painting on my channel <laughs> okay so I'm going to very lightly just add some more little details as I say, the idea of this live feed is just the finishing touches. That's all I'm doing. And you can see the amount of paint I pulled off now. It's quite a lot. But that's the beauty about folding your tissue or your kitchen roll like this, is that you can just refold it to a different position and uh, carry on with it. So that's how I tend to work on a regular basis. I've very often got a piece of tissue in my hand, actually. Not because I've got a cold or anything like that. It's you. No, nothing like that. 
mainly because of the fact that it's handy. You drop a, a splodge of water on your painting, you've got to quickly go, ah, and lift it off. It's very handy to have a piece of tissue in your hand. In my right hand, obviously, because I'm left-handed. Okay, right, so let's add some more details further down. Hopefully you can see this on the camera. So it's just down the bottom there. So just add a little bit more and that. Make sure you can see what I'm looking at. That's better. There you go. Chop the top of its head off. There we are, look. That's a bit better for you. So just a few more in there. Okay. Give it a quick rinse out. May Art, hello May, how are you today? Wonderful. You're wonderful. That's what you, oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Okay, a few more little, tiny little highlights. I know it's all the same kind of thing, but it's the way I have to work it. When I did the white, by the way, out of interest anyway, if anybody's going to even think about this, is that to add the white on, the white goes on over, over the top of the detail. So I had the detail on first using a variety of shades. I do this on, on patreon.com with my lessons on there that show people and how I do this. And then you've got to add the white over the top, as I say, because at least that way you've got something underneath to kind of work on top of. Because you can't have light without dark, you can't have dark without light. It wouldn't work one without the, the other, would it? So you do need to do something like that. So yes, yeah, so if you want to have a look at the uh, some of the videos, you'll see that. I think I did that on the Robin one, you know, the free one. Um, yeah, I think I did that on next. I did use white paint on that as well. Um, there's a variety of white suspension in white paint as well, by the way, that you can get. So it's well worth thinking about and shopping around, see which ones are, you know, the best ones you can find. The one I use is by SAA, um, but there are some other good ones on the market. But be careful though, because some, not all, are opaque. Some are semi-opaque, some are semi-transparent, you know, so bear that in mind. Um, because otherwise, you tend to find that um, it doesn't cover, it doesn't... It doesn't cover anything which, you know, like for example here, so it won't cover all the dark areas underneath if it's not opaque. And watercolour is known for being transparent, isn't it? The majority of the time, you can get semi-opaque um, watercolours as well. So bear that in mind when you do use them, when you do use a white. One thing I did do with this, by the way, uh, when I was working on all these feathers, trying to kind of work out, map it all out where they all are, just so it's kind of accurate enough towards the photograph if I can do that. What I actually did with that, I used a little idea, which is something like, well, I'm going to show you in a minute. I'm going to dig one out there with me a minute. Something like that. Really? Yeah, honestly. All it is, I've got another one. You can use a bigger one, a smaller one. There you go, there's another one there. And one of these I put on my tablet, and the other one I put on my painting. So at least that way I can isolate an area on the photograph because the problem is when you've got so much detail like this, you first look at it and you think, ah, where was I, where was I? Every time you go to mix your colour, you come back, from, where was I? By having something like that in place, at least just on the photograph, you'll be able to kind of focus your eye more or less straight away to the area that you want to carry on painting on. And looking at the angles and the shapes all the time, it gets a little bit confusing with all this mass of feathers. So that's what I tend to do sometimes, just use a bit of a, just a cut out watercolor card. Because I also use that as well. Uh, let's have a quick look. If I want to test the colors, if this is water, watercolor paper, I can add a color next to the hole. So if you use something like, let's get a small one actually. Get something like that. Something like that, and you want to match the color up to the photograph. You can now offer that onto the photograph, mix your color, Look for the colour you want to mix, say for example that colour there. Have a good look. Let's go over the same at the top of that one again. And then you can mix that same kind of colour or work it out before you even go to the painting. So it just kind of saves a little bit of time when you want to um, kind of get your colours mixed. Because there's nothing worse in my eyes than testing your colours out on the main painting itself and then getting it wrong. So it's kind of best to, in my eyes anyway, that's why I tend to work it, is just to kind of test your colours out first before you um, decide to go straight to the painting, okay? Get some idea in your head what you want to work with first of all before you actually do that. Okay, so how long have we been on? 22 minutes, so I'm going to be on for another eight or so minutes and then I'm going to go. So as I say, if you've got any questions you want to ask, you're more than welcome to. Just while you've got me on live online, 
I am live. I'm alive. So ask away as I said. So you're more than well welcome. Right, I think what I might do, you know, I might just have a look at that eye a minute. I'm not quite happy with the shape. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. I'm going to look at just carefully at that main eye. Yeah, I think the uh, the overall, I think I've over brightened it a little bit around the edges of that. So I'm, just, I'm, looking, I'm just very careful looking at the photograph here, actually. Because where I've got the highlights just around there, I'm going to come in with a damp, clean brush and just very lightly just tap. And all I want to do is just soften those areas just around just around the edge of the eye. Because these white marks are put in there, they're a little bit too white, I think. So we can just tap them down. Just tap them to soften them back a little bit. That's how delicate watercolour can be. But the thing with watercolour, though, is that you can control it. You can. Honestly, I can teach you. I can show you how to control it. You know where to go. You know where I am. So if you want to learn, you know where I am. It's not a problem. And just tap those down. Oh, one thing, you know, um, I forgot to mention on my Patreon channel, actually, because... Um, it's not just um, the $10, $20, $30 levels. There's also a $5 level where people get a free PDF. Well, not free, so they're paying for it, but as a subscription um, sort of thing. Well, it's a donation kind of idea, isn't it? It's like a crowdfunding source uh, Patreon, isn't it? Um, but what I've decided to do from here on every month is do a short video tutorial uh, for the $5 level. So in the UK, what's that, about £3.60-odd, something like that? So... Um, so for that, you get a short video and you get a PDF document as well on how to paint the main monthly tutorial, if you get the idea. So that's what I've, I've you know, Joe and myself come up with the idea. And I think it's uh, could work very well, actually, because um, for $5, you're going to get quite a lot for your money. <laughs> so, But hey, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. OK, right. So that's just kind of touched in just that little bit more. I'll tell you what I do need to do. It looks like eyelashes, you know, coming off the bottom of that eye there. So I'm going to add a few of those here. I just need slightly thicker blacky browny red. All right. Blacky brown. I'm very technical, aren't I? So blacky browny red. And I want a few little eyelashes. That's what they look like. Just a few odd ones. I'm going to overdo it. It's going to look a bit silly otherwise. Just a few kind of coming away from there. And this widens there, you know. Just gets a little bit wider there. I think I do need to lift off just a small amount of paint just around there, I reckon. And you know what to do with lifting off? Very lightly lift it with some tissue. I only want to take a little bit off, and the, the more you do this over the same area, the more paint it will remove. So I only do it a little bit if you just want a hint of a light there or shape. And that's how I created that shape just by doing that. So basically what we're working with, in some cases, is sort of a negative painting really, because a negative painting is when you paint around a subject and the subject inside really is, is kind of, well, left blank really. But what I'm doing, I'm actually lifting off some of the paint in order to leave a negative shape. So that's the way I intend to work on it. So you can do that if you want to. Oh, I'll tell you what, we do need some more down there as well, looking down that area. So just down the bottom here, I'm going to lift a few, I'm trying to see where that goes actually, because we've got quite a few that come around, just around the bottom of the beak, the side of the beak here. Just <laughs> The thing is, uh, when you look at a photograph, the more that you look at the photograph, the more that you tend to see. And that's why, as I say, I've always got this photograph, you can't see it off camera, as I say, but I've always got this photograph in front of me and my eyes are constantly flicking backward and forward to the photograph and the painting as well as a computer at the moment as well for some odd reason i wonder why that is so because of that you know that's that's how come you you tend to see more detail the more you look at the photograph the more you will see and that's why i always say that's all my patrons 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 on patreon I'm trying to say it right paul so they understand that is that, you know, it's something that I tend to instill in them on a regular basis. So they probably get they probably get fed up with me saying it on a regular basis as well, but they know what I mean, they really do. So, okay. And then just a few more. I'm trying to see where it's um kind of ducks in a little bit. And I've also noticed this beak has got a little bit more blue, so I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. 
I'm going to go for just a touch of indigo. So bear with me a minute. So this will be the one in question. I want a little bit of indigo. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'll indigo there. Equal indigo. See what I did there? Okay, hang on now. I'll put it in there, look. I'll try, stop trying to make jokes. Indigo, lad. Okay. A bit more, I think. I want it a little bit bluer. But I want this more to like a... I don't know, like a watery consistency really more than anything. So let's add a bit more water in there. So there's a tiny little bit of indigo. Now, mixed with a little bit of lamp black. Now I need to add a little bit of this just into the bottom part of the beak because it's not quite blue enough. As I say, the more you look, the more you see. And I just noticed that. Uh, a little bit more around there. Right, you've got literally about two minutes and I'll be going, okay? So if you've got any questions you want to ask me, you're more than welcome to. But don't worry, if you catch this um, after I've gone live, not a problem. It will be saved onto Facebook, obviously, and I will get all the notifications from Facebook from any uh, comments that people make. So we'll see your comments after it's gone live. Okay, so when it's uh, like an hour down the line, don't worry, I will see your comments. So please comment regardless. So carry on regardless, we know a song about that. So please carry on and uh, put a comment down below. You're more than welcome to. And that's, that's better. That's a bit better. So all I wanted to do, just kind of add that in there. I think, you know, this is about done. So I'm going to wash my brush out. I've got a double water pot here. And I'm going to get a pen. One second. Back in a minute. One be a minute. Are you still there? Okay. Right, so I'm going to get a pen, and what I'm going to use is this particular one. It's a fine liner. This is, um, what is it, 0.35 nib, so it's quite quite very fine, really. So if I just quickly go onto the other um, screen at the moment, so you can just see what I'm doing. That's better. Okay. Sue Roberts, hello, Sue. How are you? You just caught me at the end. <laughs> uh, I love this painting. We have lots of Ospreys up here, and I like watching them. Oh, you're a lucky person, you. You really are. Something I'd love to see live, it really would be. I mean, I've seen them on the television, obviously, on a regular basis, but never seen them, never seen one live. But there's a lot of birds that Joe, my, Joe, Joe, you know, my partner Joe and myself would love to see. Um, I'd like to see them. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to think. We've seen a bittern. We saw one of them as well, one of the nature reserves. But there's a lot of things we'd like to see. We've spotted a red kite as well. Somebody was flying it the other day. No, that's a red kite, which we saw, a uh, bird of prey, which is good. Right, okay, so I'm just going to very carefully make sure I'm on the screen. Now I have to decide where I'm going to sign this. I could either sign it just up the side there. I could sign it down here. We're right in the open. Um, and this is one of those things which you've got to consider when you when you sign a paint. If it's a, a bird on a tree with feet, everything else, and it's on a branch, sometimes I'll sign along the length of the branch, just very small, you know, so it's in there. But in this case, debatable. Ooh, I don't know. I might sign it down here. In fact, I'll tell you what, I think I will. I'll just move it up a little bit. So I'm going to go quiet for just a few seconds while I put my little signature down here. And there we go. And that is now a completed spray. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Just kind of, I don't know, just went live. Just kind of finish it on, online with you. Just just for a bit of fun more than anything. So, remember, if you want to have a go at any of my tutorials, have a look at the free one to say on Patreon, the, the Robin, as I mentioned earlier on. Just so you can have a blast and see what you think about painting a bird, really. Just have a go at painting one. 